Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, we're gonna look at a ton of sequence examples. Now, in my experience, these are at the level of an exam. This is about the level of difficulty you would expect on a typical Calc 2 exam. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's do a whole bunch of sequence examples. <laughs> Here's our first example, here's a sub n, it's some sequence, and how do we find whether a sequence converges or diverges? Remember, that's usually the question. We wanna know, does this sequence converge or diverge? The way we typically do it is take the limit as n goes to infinity. So let's take the limit of this sequence. And since this is a rational function, a polynomial in the numerator, a polynomial in the denominator, you could use the rule of thumb if your teacher allows that. You know, you just look at the highest power on the top and the highest power on the bottom. Not every teacher will allow this, so I'll just do it the, quote, longer way. Uh, if you take this limit, you'll quickly see we're, we're going to get the indeterminate form infinity over infinity. And when you get infinity over infinity, we usually do L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule says they take the derivative of the numerator, so this would just be uh, 3 minus 12n, right? The derivative of a constant is 0. And again, uh, L'Hopital's rule is defined for continuous functions, but it works the same way for sequences. So I'm just, I'm, I'm doing this like it was a continuous function. And then I take the derivative of the denominator. Uh, that'll just be 6n, right? The derivative of a constant is 0. And I try this limit again. Well, you'll see again, I'm gonna get the indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. So I can do L'Hopital's rule one more time, take the derivative of the top, that will be minus 12 over the derivative of the bottom. I take the limit again. Well, now I just have a constant. Uh, the limit of a constant is just the constant itself. So this is just minus 12 over six or negative two. So this sequence converges to negative two, which is the same result you would have gotten if you used the rule of thumb, or I've heard it called the garbage rule. You just look at the highest power on the top versus the highest in the denominator. Uh, in this case, they're the same, so you would just divide the coefficients. Minus 6 over 3 is the same as minus 2. Here's our second sequence. It's sine of n over 4 to the n. Does this sequence converge or diverge? Again, we need to take the limit as n goes to infinity. But the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n is not defined. That limit doesn't exist because sine oscillates forever. It bounces up and down forever. So this won't really have a limit. Well, you can intuitively get the answer uh, knowing that 4 to the n grows faster than sine of n, but that's not a perfect explanation. Maybe some professors want a bit more of an explanation. And so here's how you do it. Remember, we use the squeeze theorem or the squeeze law. I bound sine above and below. Remember, sine is bounded above by 1. Sine is bounded below by negative 1. And how can I get from here to what I want? Well, I'll divide everything in my inequality by 4 to the n. And now I have the sequence I care about bounded by two different things, and I'll take the limit of each piece. And now what we'll see is that the limit of 1 over 4 to the n as n goes to infinity, well, this would be like 1 over infinity tends to 0. Same deal here, minus 1 over 4 to the infinity, or minus 1 over infinity, this also tends to 0. So zero bounds above and below whatever the limit of this quantity is. Well, hey, it's got to be zero if it's less than zero and also greater than zero. So this sequence converges to zero. It also makes sense if you've talked about related rates of growth. Um, exponential functions are growing much faster than a sine function. And if the denominator is growing faster than the numerator, the limit will tend to zero. So, Either way you look at it, this sequence converges to zero. Here's a sequence, n squared times sine of pi n. Now, you might start to be thrown off by this. 
until you inspect the terms of the sequence. Remember, sequences are just defined for natural number terms. They traditionally start at one or maybe two, and then you just count up one, two, three, four, five. This isn't a continuous thing. So what would the first term be? C sub one, that would be one squared, which is one, times sine of pi times one. Sine of pi is zero. What would the second term be? times sine of 2 pi. Oh, well, sine of 2 pi is 0. The third term would be, you know, 1 cubed. I guess I will write it. Sine of 3 pi, but 3 pi is the same as 1 pi, which is 0. I could do this all day long. Or maybe you could remember a little bit of trigonometry, knowing that sine of n pi is 0 for all integer n. So this sequence actually is just 0 for every term. It's, it's not even the limit zero. Well, the limit is zero and this sequence does converge to zero, but the reasoning is every single term is equivalent to zero. So the limit, again, if I want to find convergence or divergence, it's a bit redundant. The limit of a constant is the constant itself. So the sequence, every term is zero and the sequence converges to zero. It's a little bit of a trick question, but I can see your professor maybe putting something like this on a test. Here's a sequence, there's nothing fancy about it. I don't really have to do any algebra. This is more of a test of your memory. What's the limit as n goes to infinity of arc tangent of x? For whatever reason, calc professors since the beginning of time love working with the arc tangent function or you might know it as the inverse tangent function. It's just really nice. It's a nice continuous trig function. You know, uh, it's got bounds, it's got nice derivative and integrals and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, arctan seems to come up a lot, so this is a really good one to know. You know, it'll come up probably not even just in Calc 2, but also Calc 3, and probably differential equations if you have to go that high. So remembering arctangent is bounded above by pi over 2 and bounded below by minus pi over 2. Here's the graph for you, and so what we have is the limit as n goes to infinity of this function. Well, I'll use the theorem that a bounded monotonic sequence must converge. In this case, it's bounded above and below by pi over, the pi over twos, and arctan is always increasing. You can see it's always going up, so it must converge, and it has limit at its boundary right here. So this limit will approach pi over two, and this sequence will converge to pi over two. I had to pick one with a variable in the exponent. These are the ones where you'll have to do the E and LN trick, or you might just know it as the LN trick. The reason is, if we take this limit, the inside will be tending toward infinity, but the exponent will be tending toward zero. Infinity to the zero is one of the indeterminate forms, which means we have to do something. We have to do some sort of algebra to figure this out. So to take this limit, like I said, the trick is, we insert this e to the natural log thing. And uh, that's because these are inverse functions. They'll cancel each other out. They'll get us back to where we started. So this is a valid algebraic thing to do. But the reason we do it is because we can use the property of logarithm. We can drop that exponent out front. I can write this like 1 over n times natural log of n plus 3, all in the exponent of e. And now, uh, don't worry if when you do the problem, you don't have, you don't carry the e all the way through. Uh, some people will just, just do the natural log, and at the very end, they'll, they'll put it in the exponent of e. But I just like to, to keep it along there, or sometimes I'll forget about it. The problem with this is now if I take the limit, um, this piece, 1 over infinity, um, sorry, would be tending towards 0. But natural log of infinity is infinity. And so I get a different indeterminate form. And to use L'Hopital's rule, we need a fraction. So we write this as a fraction. So instead of timesing by 1 over n, I'll just divide by n. Those are algebraically equivalent. And now L'Hopital's rule is going to work because this exponent is now approaching infinity over infinity. I can take the derivative of the numerator and making sure I just keep this e down here, remember it's there, the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of natural log, whatever's on the inside goes in the bottom, the derivative of the inside is 1 goes on the top, and L'Hopital's rule says it's all over the derivative of the inside, uh, the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of n is just 1. 
And so this is now just the limit of e to the 1 over n plus 3. I take the limit as n goes to infinity. That would be e to the 1 over infinity, e to the 0, or 1. So there you go. There were a whole bunch of worked out sequence examples for you. I hope that helps you prep for a quiz or a test. If it helps you out, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Have a fantastic day.